Hi, I'm Peter Kamström of Kamström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I'll talk about ticket categorization. We have a, an IT help desk system, and of course, this could be any type of issue tracking system. And those tickets need to be categorized by either hardware, software, or user, so we know, you know, we can get statistics for those things. And also, we need to keep track of the default assignee for each type of ticket. In this demo, I'm just going to do the gathering information and then I'm going to do the automation to set the default assignee automatically when a ticket is categorized. But in this demo, I'm just going to do the information gathering. So first of all, we need to create a ticket system, of course, and I'm going to just add an app for that. And that's going to be a tasks list. I'm going to call it tickets. And then we're going to have another list called ticket rules. So that's the default assignee for each category. So I'm going to add an app for that. That's going to be a custom list. And then let's go into the ticket rules and define that. First of all, let's go into the settings for this ticket rules. And we want to have versioning settings. I always want that on, of course. And we don't want the attachments in this list. We should always remove those if we don't use them. That's just a bit of cleanup on this list. All right, moving on. Now, these lists, of course, the tickets, I'm gonna move those up in the navigation there, and the ticket rules, they're connected. So now we can connect those in two ways. And if you've ever designed a relational database, the natural way of doing this is, of course, to have a connection between those tables and use a lookup column in the tickets to look at the ticket rules. And that would make a lot of sense. But I have burnt myself many times using that kind of lookup column. And especially when we're doing automation and um, workflows and flows, or any time when I'm building something on top of a lookup, I usually get problems. So I try to stay away from them. Instead, I'm going to use a site column. So let's go into site settings, create a site column. I'm going to call that ticket category like that. And notice that I give it a camel case name first. That's going to be a choice. And then I'm going to put that in the new group Contoso. And then just do these hardware, software, and users. And now those happen to be in alphabetical order already, so I don't have to worry about that. So then we create that column, and I did made a mistake there because I didn't clear out the default value. We don't want the default value to be hardware all the time. We want that to be cleared. So let's do, go down and do that. And also I'm gonna change that camel case to see that to be just normal ticket category. And the reason I did the camel case first and then change it after was that when I'm going to use a column like that in automation, I don't want the internal name to be something with a space in it. If I don't have a space, then it usually goes very correct. But if I do have a space, then I get ugly internal names, and we don't want that. So and we're going to be using that internal name later in a flow. So now we have the ticket category, and that choice column is, of course, available on all lists in this site and all subsites. So now I'm going to go into the tickets list and go into the list settings. And under the columns here, I'm going to add from an existing site column, find the Contoso group and add the ticket category, right? Now I have that column available there and I'm gonna click on in on the task content type and just change the column order and put the cat ticket category as number two. So that comes up right after the task name. So now we have that done. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add that existing column into this ticket rules. So I'm gonna go into list settings, add the existing site column, the ticket category, and then I'm gonna change the title to be just comment. We don't have any additional comment and that's not gonna be mandatory of course. And then we're going to add another column for who, who's responsible for that. I'm going to create another column, call that the default assignee. And that's going to be a person or group column. 
of course it's just going to be persons that are default responsible all right so let's just ch and change the column ordering also so we have the ticket category as number one we have the default assignee as number two and that's about it we can also put the ticket category here and make that choice column require enforce unique value so that means that we won't have any doubles there because that would be confusing of course and of course that gets indexed then and now we can go into our ticket rules list and just do a quick edit i forgot to change the view here so now the comments field is still there as number one we're going to change that so hardware i'll take care of that and software that's going to be Alex. And then we're just going to leave the users blank because that's going to work, of course, also. If we don't have a default, then it's going to be left blank. So I'm going to exit the quick edit there and clean up the view and put the ticket category as number one, default assignee as number two, and the common as number three. And let's clean up that default assignee in camel case. That doesn't look that nice. So let's list settings. Default assignee. All right. So now we have two lists, the tickets and the ticket rules. And in the ticket rules, we have defined what the rules are for hardware and software, but not for user problems. And of course we can create new tickets like that. And that's gonna have the ticket category. It's gonna be a hardware, software, or user problem. So that's good. Now we just need to automate this thing, but we've done the first bit. We've done the gathering information. Next step, I'm gonna do a workflow video and a flow video showing you how to get the ticket categorized automatically. Thank you for watching this demonstration.